How are you doing, Storytime friends? My name is Miss Lisa. If you haven't seen a story time before, I get to do the story times at Worthington Park Library normally. All right. Well, we are going to be talking about something you might see a lot of this time of year. We're going to be talking today about bugs. Do you have a favorite bug? Do you like bugs? Some of my kids do not like bugs, but some of my kids really love bugs. They love getting to watch them and we tend to name them and we have like a cute little catcher that we try to observe them in for a little bit. And those are pretty cheap. You can usually find those at Dollar Tree or something if you're looking for one. All right. Well, I wanted to go ahead and talk about bugs today because I don't know about where you are, but where we are, it's really hot during the day right now. And so we spend a lot of the day inside and then we go out in the morning or late at night. So late at night, I've been seeing a special kind of bug. And it's one of our favorites. As it starts to get dark, you might see this bug. Can you think what that bug might be? A lightning bug or a firefly. Yeah, we love watching those. We like to count and see how many we can find. That's lots of fun. All right, they're so pretty to watch, aren't they? What about a ladybug? Does anybody like ladybugs? Yeah, or bumblebees. Bees are so important. They're the reason we have food. Yeah, they're very important to getting fruits and vegetables because the bees fly from flower to flower and help the fruit to grow. Isn't that cool? Okay, so I was thinking we would start with a couple of bug books and might learn a little bit about bugs along the way today. Are you ready? All right. This first book today is called Some Bugs, and the words are by Angela, I think it's Ditterlisi, and the pictures, it says the bugs, are by Brendan Wenzel. Oh, and this book is from Beach Lane Books. Are you ready? It's going to talk about a lot of different bugs. Some bugs sting. Some bugs bite. Some bugs stink. And some bugs fight. Some bugs flutter. Some bugs crawl. Some bugs curl up in a ball. Some bugs hop. Ooh, do you recognize any of those hoppers? Some bugs glide. Some bugs swim. And some bugs hide. Some bugs click. Some bugs sing. Some bugs do a buzzing thing. What are those bugs? You know those bugs, don't you? Some bugs build. Some bugs make. What are they making? They're building a hive and they're making a spider web. Some bugs hunt. Did you know that some bugs hunt? And some bugs take. What are those bugs? I know. Do you remember our story, Five Hungry Ants, where the ants went on a picnic? That was fun, wasn't it? Stinging, biting, stinking, fighting, hopping, gliding, swimming, hiding, building, making, taking, oh, hunting, taking. Bugs are oh so fascinating. So kneel down close. Look very hard and find some bugs in your backyard. Well, you might not live with a backyard that's as pretty as this one, but I bet that wherever you live, you can find some bugs around. I was sitting in a parking lot the other day and noticed some bumblebees on the little bit of flowers in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you can probably find bugs wherever you are. Keep an eye out for them. 
I also really like that at the end of this book and at the end of a lot of our books today, there's information about the different bugs that are in the book. So you could learn a little bit about all of those books, find out what their names are, and then you could do some research yourself too. You did a great job with that book. Very nice. Did you have a favorite bug that was in there? I do love ladybugs, they're one of my favorites. We actually have a, one of the books I wanted to tell you about today. It's called Super Ladybug to the Rescue. Yeah, we're not gonna read that one today. It's a very fun, silly book about a ladybug that goes around the world rescuing other animals. Let's see, I was thinking about one of my other favorites we mentioned really fast in there is bumblebees. And I made this not very exciting looking shaker. If you've come to story time, you know we have shaky eggs at story time, don't we? And so when we're in story time, we use our shaky eggs. But if you're at home, you might not have shaky eggs. And if you don't have any instruments that you can use instead of a shaky egg, what you can do is take a plastic egg or just a small container like this with a lid. And whatever fits in your hand well, that's really what we want, okay? So find something small that fits in your hand well, and you could put beans inside of it. I put rice inside of this one today. You could put sprinkles or pretty much anything small like tiny pasta. And you can make your own shaker. Now today, we're gonna use our shaker and have it pretend to be a bumblebee. And we're gonna sing a little bit of Lori Berkner's Bumblebee song. Are you ready? All right, we're gonna start with a little lower and just kind of shaking it, okay? Just go like this. Buzz, 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 buzz. Buzz, 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 buzz. Now we're gonna shake it and take it flying. Are you ready? Oh, bumblebee. Can't you see? It's just you and me. And we're gonna do the buzz again, ready? Right? <gasps> One, two, three, go! Buzz, 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 And then let's sing the flying part again, ready? Oh, bumblebee, can't you see? It's just you and me. All right. If you want to listen to that whole song, she has it on YouTube and you can do it along with her. If you make your own shaker beforehand, it's lots of fun. She also has a wonderful song that I love to do with shaker eggs called I Know a Chicken, one of my favorites. Did you know that whenever we do songs with shaky eggs or anything like that that's following directions, it really helps us develop our skills at following directions, which, help us, which helps us get ready for school. I know. So you could do something really fun that's helping you get ready for school. And when we learn to follow directions and listening and putting on our listening ears, oh, it's just so good for us in life. You are doing great today. So we did some bugs. We did our shaky eggs. I also wanted to tell you about one of my favorite nonfiction books about butterflies. Does anybody like butterflies? Mm-hmm. I have it right here. It's called A Butterfly is Patient. And one of the things I really like about this book is it has some words that are big, like a butterfly is patient. And then it has some words that are smaller that if you're really excited about what you're reading, your grown up can read you those pages too. A lot of nonfiction books have that where they have a larger text for kids who have a slightly shorter attention span. And then they have smaller text that has a lot more information for kids who are interested in that topic. So don't be afraid of that nonfiction section. Do you know what nonfiction means? It means real information. You can find lots of real information that you can do as a fun read aloud with littler kids. Okay, let's do our next story. I bet you know this one, don't you? This is Eric Carle's classic book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Now, I lovingly say that when a book is classic, it's story time. That means it's old, but it's really good. So this one's old, but it's really good. 
Are you ready? I love the illustration styles. If you ever want to make some Eric Carle inspired artwork, you can just swirl together a couple colors of paint on a piece of paper and then have a grown up help you or you can cut it out into shapes and then you can make things with those shapes. We did a birthday party theme one time that was Very Hungry Caterpillar and we had so much fun making the decorations because they're really easy for any age to do. Even little, little, little kids can do finger painting. Mm -hmm. All right. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Do you see that little egg? Good job. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two, what are those? Two pears, but guess what? He was still hungry. We're gonna say that a lot, you can say it with me. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries but he was still hungry. What's next? On Friday, we went through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. He ate through one, two, three, four, five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm not a tiny little caterpillar, but I don't think I could eat that much. Whew. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. Yeah, after he ate all that other stuff, he got a tummy ache. And the green leaf helped him feel a lot better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big old caterpillar. Look at that guy. And he built a small house called a chrysalis. It says cocoon. Cocoon is wrong. Cocoon is for moths. It's a chrysalis. Around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. And then... He nibbled a hole in the chrysalis, pushed his way out, and oh, he was a beautiful butterfly. Look at that. Did you think that was going to happen? Have you already read this book? Hmm. And then back to that fun illustration style at the end. I love it. Do you remember our Days of the Week song? We sang that one a couple weeks ago. Let's see if we can give it a try. Ready? Remember it involves snapping and I can't snap? Yeah, we'll just pretend. <laughs> oh, I'll use my shaky egg. Perfect. Are you ready? Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Very nice job. Now, grown-ups, I did say a couple weeks ago when I introduced that song that that old song might sound familiar to you because it was co-opted to be used for preschools. Okay, let's see. I wanted to talk a little tiny bit about bugs. We're going to talk about insects. Do you know what insects are? They're just bugs. It's a fancy word. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about the parts of an insect. Now, I want to double check. Do you have a head? Did you bring your head to story time today? Oh, good. Okay, so you have a head. Guess what? Insects, they have heads. Right, I'm going to draw an insect. Let's see if I can do it like this. Oh, so you can see it. Oh, perfect. Not awkward at all. Okay, so here's an insect head. I know, I'm quite the artist. What, what shape did I make my insect head? I just made a circle, didn't I? 
All right. You have a head. An insect has a head. Now, an insect has three big parts of its body. The head. Oops. The thorax. That's a word we don't have, huh? Thorax. Mm -hmm. And then the abdomen. Now, in almost all bugs, the abdomen is the biggest part. That's that part down at the bottom. Did you know you have an abdomen? You have a head and an abdomen, but not a thorax. So you're probably not a bug. An abdomen is the part of your body where your arms and legs come out of. It's that middle bit, like here to your bottom. Yeah. All right. So we have the abdomen, thorax, and the head. Right now it looks like a snowman, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks like I'm drawing a snowman. But what we're going to do next is add, do you know how many legs an insect has? It's a good question, isn't it? They have six legs. Six legs. And I think, if I remember correctly, all of their legs come out of their thorax. So we'll give it one, two, three four, five, six. All right. What's that looking like? Looks a bit like a spider right now, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, spiders have eight legs. They don't have six. They're technically arachnids. Okay. So we have this part and what else do we need on the top of a head? What does an insect have on the top of their heads? Do you know what that's called? They have antenna. They use those for a lot of different things. They use those to know what's going on in the world around them. So they kind of use them very similarly to how we use our eyes and our sense of smell and our sense of taste and touch because they will feel any little vibrations in the air. It's really interesting. All right, so they have antenna. Now some bugs have wings, some bugs don't. So if we were gonna add wings, we would make this, what would this look like then? A butterfly, a gray butterfly. Boy, I did go with that. All right, so now you know the different parts of a bug. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They have antenna, and they have six legs. And they might or might not have wings. Mm -hmm. You did a great job. If you've come to Storytime before, you know that I am very lucky to have a big smart board where I get to draw things. So thanks for putting up with my little whiteboard idea. Okay, let's see. I wanted to do one more little story. It's called Counting, and it's by David A. Carter. <gasps> this one is going to take almost no time at all, and I bet you can read it to me. Are you ready? What number do you think we're going to start with when we start counting? One. One bug. Two. Two bugs. Three. Three bugs. Four. How many? Four bugs. What's going to be next? We have one, two, three, four, five, five bugs. Do you see the numeral five down there? Look at all those bugs. Are we going to go even more? That's all that'll fit in the middle there. Six, six bugs. Bugs galore! Look at all those. Do you want to count and see how many there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve on this page. You did great with that. All right, I know a little song about singing, and you know I love this one. Let's do one from the left. Are you ready? All right, this is a Jim Gill song, just a reminder. 
And we're going to start, I'm going to go opposite of you so that you do the right side. Are you ready? We're going to start with our left side and we're going to bring one finger out. One from the left and one from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called whoop de doo Good job. Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those two. Oh, now how many are we going to do? Ready? Two from the left and two from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Snips Galore. Just like scissors. Good job. Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those four. All right, we brought two from each side. What are we going to do now? Three from the left. And three from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Finger Mix. Can you switch sides? Oh, that's so hard. Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those six. Hmm. What should we do next? We did one, two, three, four from the left and four from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Bend and Straight. Then they sang goodbye and walked away. Those eight. Oh, are we running out of fingers? What's next? Five from the left and five from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Clap and Clap. And clap and clap again. Then they said goodbye and walked away. All ten. Very good job. You did a wonderful job with all of our story time today. All right, I wanted to tell you about the last book that we didn't go into today, Honey Bee. It's a fantastic read. It talks all about about bees. Another one that I couldn't get a copy of was Bee Dance. That's a beautiful book that talks about how bees communicate with other bees. That means how they talk to other bees. Guess how they do it? It's in the title. They do a bee dance to tell the other bees that they found honey or found nectar and how far away it is and what direction to go to get there. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's how they talk to each other. Okay, I was just, ugh. Sorry about that. I wanted to talk to you about a few other ideas that I thought you could do. You could make the shaker egg like we talked about. I wanna make sure that you know that you can fill in for your summer reading anytime you watch a story time. You can count one of my story times as that. You can count one of Miss Karen's or Miss Jenny's on there. Um, you can also count any of the stuff that's at the worthingtonlibraries.org slash SRC. There's a whole list of fun things that you can do. And if you do some of the things I suggest here at Storytime, you can count that too. Also, of course, you can count reading. So if you are being read to, or if you are reading to someone, or even if you are looking through the pictures of a wordless book, you can count, if you're five and under, every 15 minutes that you read or are read to, you fill in one of these. And if you're a bigger kid who's maybe stuck watching this with their little sibs, um, you'll read 20 minutes if you are 6 to 11. Now, once you have this all done and you filled it all out, do you know what you get? If you bring it back to the library, we have an outside station set up where you can turn this in and you can pick out a free book that's all yours. It's a brand new book. We picked some really fun titles and I think you're gonna love coming in to get them. Um, and if you leave this with us, you can be entered for a prize to win a bike. Yeah, not everybody gets the bike, okay? There's only one for each age, but it's not cool that you could. All right, so I wanted to make sure I told you about those things. Um, I was also thinking one of my favorite ideas that we usually do during this week is a spider web toss. So what I do is I take a hula hoop. If you have a small hula hoop from a, like 
the Dollar Tree next to Worthington Park sells them. Um, but it's about this big. And then I take masking tape and I go from one side to the other and I make a spider web out of masking tape and then hang it up sticky side out toward you. And then you can throw pom-poms or cotton balls and try to catch some bugs in the spider web. It's really fun. It's one of our favorite things we do every year. So I am pretty sad to not get to do it with you. But maybe if you're feeling adventurous and mom or dad or your caregiver has a little bit of time, maybe they can make you a spider web. It's a pretty fun activity. All right, so I was thinking you might like making that. Um, I also thought that if you wanted, you can make, oh, I don't know if you remember, a few weeks ago we made these little bumblebees bzz, 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 out of a pom-pom that we just colored on with Sharpie. Mm -hmm. Just color on it with a permanent marker and make a little bumblebee. And you could use this and do the bumblebee song. You can also use uh, tweezers to try to pick up the bumblebees and put them on flowers. You can count out how many you can fit on a flower or something like that. You can make the flowers out of construction paper or coffee filters, whatever you have in your house, okay? All right. If you are using just these two fingers to pick things up, guess what you're working on? You're building those big writing muscles. Can you show me your big writing muscles? I know I'm obsessive about big writing muscles. Do you know that the more we do like this to help us build our big writing muscles, the better our handwriting is gonna be when we start school? I know, that's so nice. And we can do lots of fun things like squishing peas and oh, we can color upside down. Any of that type of stuff that we're doing helps build those muscles. All right. I was also thinking that if you wanted, you could make, sorry, I have a lot of supplies for this week. You can make a butterfly. There's a couple ways you could make a butterfly. If you want, butterflies are always symmetric. Do you know what that means? It means they look the same on one side as they do on the other. So if you wanted, you could cut a butterfly shape, fold a piece of paper in half, there we go. Cut a butterfly shape or ask your grown up to cut a butterfly shape if you're still working on your scissor skills. And then once you cut it out, you could open it back up, put paint on one side and then smush both sides together and you'll make a butterfly that way. Or you can take a couple coffee filters and if you, oh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. If you smush these guys together in the middle and then take a pipe cleaner. There we go. You could try to give it how many body parts? Do you remember? Abdomen, thorax, and I need to give it a head. And a head. One, two, three body parts, wings, and I made sure I gave it two antennas. You could also give it some legs if you're working on that. And how many legs do we say that insects have? Six. And you can color all of this in before you make the butterfly. And then you'll have a butterfly with beautiful wings. And that took me, what, three seconds? You can do it really fast. But you could spend a lot of time coloring the wings so that they're super pretty when you put it all together. Again, I just used two coffee filters so that I could have four wings because butterflies have an upper set of wings and a lower set of wings. Um, but you could do it with just two or just one if that's what you have. Okay. Oh, I think that's, oh, almost everything. But I was also thinking you could go out and do a bug hunt. You can look around wherever you live and see if you can find some bugs. Now, if you live in a place with a lot of cars, do take a grown up with you. You need to be careful, stay safe. But you can look all around for bugs. If you have binoculars, they might help you look for bugs. If you have a magnifying glass, that might help you see them a little bit closer. Um, if you don't, you can just go out and look with these. Just look with your eyeballs. They'll do the job. So you can try to find bugs, watch them for a little bit, be a scientist and see what they're doing. And then if you want to, you can write down what they're doing or draw pictures. If you put a piece of paper on clipboard, take it outside with you, super fun way to write down notes. If you're a scientist, those are called observations. So good job being a scientist. 
Okay, the last thing I was thinking is doing thumbprint bugs is always a fun activity. So if you have um, stamp pads at your house, you can put your thumb into the stamp pad, do one, two, three stamps for the body of the bug. So we have head, thorax, abdomen, and then you can draw all the other stuff you need with markers. We love doing this activity. Um, Ed Emberly has a lot of ideas online for ways that you can do thumbprint bugs. I think that's it for today. I hope that lots of that is fun stuff that you can use at your house. Don't say you're bored. Remember last week? So you're not bored. But if you need some new ideas, I hope some of that helps. I will talk to you soon. I hope you're doing well. Take care of each other. Bye.